Luna 10 was launched on March 31, 1966 at 1048 AM UTC from Site 31 at Baikonur Cosmodrome. Its goal was to become the first orbiter around the moon. So far, missions had successfully flown by, impacted on, and in Luna 9 landed softly on the moon, but none had actually made orbit, which is technically easier than landing. Luna 10 used a similar stage as Luna 9, which had three times the propellant actually needed to make orbit, and replaced the ejecting egg seen in Luna 9 with an array of scientific instruments. It was over-designed for the task, but saved the trouble of creating an entirely new system when a proven option would do the trick. Launched on Ammonia M, its mass was nearly 1.6 tons, of which around one ton was propellant. It carried the usual array of instruments, infrared and gamma ray instruments, a magnetometer, micrometeorite detector, and other scientific measurement devices, but perhaps its most significant contribution was showing signs that the moon's gravitational field was non-uniform, that there were concentrations of mass that could alter lunar trajectories. So far, approaches to the moon had been direct to simplify guidance, aiming for an impact and then, in the case of Luna 9, slowing down to a landing. The effect of mass concentrations would only really be evident in orbital missions, and both the Soviet Union and the United States had a full slate of those planned, but this was the first one. For crewed landing missions, landing guidance would have to be adjusted, and the mass concentrations play a central role in the natural decay of orbits around the Moon, like those of the discarded lunar module ascent stages in the Apollo program. Luna 10 was in an excellent orbit to analyze the gravitational anomalies, a high 2,738 by 2,088 kilometers, with an inclination of 71.9 degrees that would allow it to pass over most of the lunar surface. However, it wasn't carrying the best instruments for the purpose. Its lunar orbiter successors, Luna 11, 12, and 14, would carry instruments to specifically measure mass concentrations, as well as take high-resolution photos of the surface, taking more advantage of the extra propellant this type of lunar insertion stage offered. The United States would only start to understand this aspect of the Moon with the launch of Lunar Orbiter 1 on August 10th, four months after this launch. So, while the United States was proceeding towards a lunar landing through crewed accomplishments in the Gemini program, the Soviet Union was still in the lead in terms of lunar probe missions, thanks to Luna 9 and 10. Luna 10 relied on batteries for power, and those allowed it to remain in service for two months. As a side feature, a bit of an easter egg if you will, it was also designed to play the Internationale, a socialist anthem originating in the Paris Commune in 1871, though that version was supposed to be sung to the tune of La Marseillaise, the French national anthem, while this was a tune introduced specifically for the lyrics later so that it could be more international, and to play that for the 23rd Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union on April 3rd. With that, thank you for watching this mission profile of Luna 10.